Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us here today. We have nine races on tap. Let's check out the track and weather conditions. We start the afternoon with a beautiful day for horse racing. The sun is shining. Temperatures in the low 80s here this afternoon. We have a fast main track and a firm turf course. First race of the day over the turf at 7.5 furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag of 12500 Field of six went postward. First race favorite, number one, Harry Dios. Racing at Gulfstream. Good start inside for the favorite, Ari Dios. Rosebud's High tries to go with him in the early stages. Also away in the top flight is Twas Nero. These three across the course. Unbridled India is sent very wide, and so is Menehune. Twas Nero, the reason for that. And Mongolian Party saved ground nicely under Baracco and now slides through as they run around the first turn. Ari Dios has the lead. Monterey Jr. taking the starch out of his runner on that first turn by Twas Nero as he moves Unbridled Indian into the second position. Racing from third, that's Rosebud's high. Menehune also hindered at that first turn run. He's now racing three wide and a joint third. At the back, Twas Nero the troublemaker and Mongolian party for the opening quarter in 24 flat. They run now to the final half mile of the first of the day, and Harry Dios has the lead, three parts of a length. Unbridled Indian is still second, Rosebud's High is still third. Manihune is fourth, Mongolian Party trying to slip through on the inside, had to tap on the brakes briefly through a 47 and one half mile, and Twas Nero was last as they round the far turn. Harry Dios, Edgar Zayas doling out the speed here, he leads it by two. Manihune making a three wide attack, Mongolian Party needs room, Rosebud's High's out the rail, Unbridled Indian drifts a bit wide, that might give room for Mongolian Party, although Rosebud's High just came off cover, so he'll have to wait again. Three sixteenths to go, three quarters, one eleven and two, with an eighth of a mile to go. Ari Dio still the one to run down. Menehune trying to do just that second. Mongolian Party's up the inside, then Rosebud's High to the wire. The favorite's a winner, Ari Dios in front. Menehune second, Mongolian Party third, Rosebud's High fourth, then Unbridled Indian and one twenty nine and two. Favorite takes care of business in today's first race is number one, Ari Dios takes him all the way under Edgar Zayas for trainer Ralph Zadie and Asterix Group. Second five, Menahoon. Third was number three, Mongolian Party, who was best of the rest. To the second race we go, a nice field of starter allowance horses at five and one half furlongs. A field of six signed on. The betting favorite, the Red Hot Blings Express. And they're off. From the center, the favorite Blings Express wins the start. Moving at the inside, Dr. J Dub. And from the outside, Harry He. They work two and a half clear of Wild Mongolia. Then Fish Fan, and the trailer is Mitos Iliendas. They run down the back stretch and go to the half mile pole. Blings Express calls the shots by a length over Harry He second. Dr. J Dub is off the speed third, two better than Fish Fan. Here's Mitos Iliendas out of last place, and now trailing is Wild Mongolia. Around the far turn, they go through the opening quarter in a reasonable 22 and four. Four and even money, it's Blings Express at the 5 16th with the lead. Harry He launches an attack from second. Dr. J Dub is third. Mito Leendez is fourth. Then Fish Fan and Wild Mongolia. There's less than a quarter of a mile to go. They're at the top of the stretch. Blings Express still has the lead. Here's Harry He set to the attack second. Back to third is Dr. J Dub down the outside and Mito Leendez with Fish Fan. Blings Express roused on the top end and still finding Harry He with a late push. Blings Express has the lead. Blings. Express wins again. Harry He second, Dr. J Dub third, then Fish Fan and Mitosi Leendas. Time for the race. Solid 102 and two. Blings Express completes the early daily double for trainer Ralph Zaidi, but the story was the time. Less than one tick off of the track record here at Gulfstream Park as the veteran of uh, By Too Much Bling wins again under Amisael Jaramillo for owners Avro Racing and CCF Racing Stable. Number six, Harry He ran a good one to be second ahead of the one Dr. J Dub who ran third. We'll take a brief time out. There's more great racing action left. Don't go away. We have to take care of these horses that you know give us so much joy. Being accredited by the TAA gives us instant credibility. People trust us even more than they have before because they know that the TAA has been to all of our location and that our horses are well cared for. I mean, this farm wouldn't look the way it is. These horses wouldn't look the way they are if it wasn't for the generosity and the hard work of the Third Aftercare Alliance. They've united our whole industry in terms of the aftercare movement. We're all working together for the same purpose. 
Back now for the third race, seven furlongs over the main track. Maiden Claimers in for a price tag of 12500 Scratch number six, Quality A-Rod. A field of five go postward. The favorite was number two. Luck is back. And they're up. Good start for Luck is Back and a good start for Do It Fast. They're the first two to begin from the outside. That's Science to Win Away Racing in third. New York Boy is now unseated the rider. Heck of an effort by Kapushev to stay on board, but number one New York Boy ducked in and unseated the rider. Down the back stretch they go and now Do It Fast scampers to a four length lead over Luck is Back second. Science to Win third. And then all I need is love. They race to the half mile pole and loose up front. It's the Russo trainee. Do it fast. And apprentice jockey John Esquilin will lead it by six. Luck is back as second and trying to tack on through a 23 and one opening quarter. Science to win is third and well clear of all I need is love. Again, number one, New York boy unseated the rider leaving the chute. The half mile was 45 and two. Very, pretty stiff tempo and do it fast starts to come back to the favorite luck is back and luck is back is now given the green light by Chamafi and is cutting into the strides well, here comes luck is back he's under a full head of steam no other way about it and he's up in the center of the racetrack to take the lead from do it fast well clear of science to win and all I need is love eighth of a mile to go Chamafi let do it fast do what he needed to do and He's doing the rest now with Luck is back. Luck is back is in front and moving away to win it by four. Second is do it fast. Science to win third. And then all I need is love. 123 and four, the time for the race. Jockey Jover Chamafi rode very smart aboard the favorite Luck is back as he let do it fast, do it fast, and then reeled him in when it mattered. Luck is back, owned, trained, and bred by Eddie Broom. And Jobert Chamafi on board. Number three, do it fast. Second ahead of five, science to win, who ran third. We can report New York boy was uninjured, as was Magomed Kapushev, the jockey. To the fourth race now on turf at one mile. Maiden claimers in for a price tag of $35,000. Scratch the seven night before. Scratch the eight, Helen, Virginia. A field of six. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. A step slow to begin was Passionate Girl. From the far outside, Land Tiz was away well. Giants Causey displays some speed while taken in hand. Here's Two Step Blues moving up toward the rail to challenge the leader in the run to the first turn. Mose Ginny is away racing in fourth ahead of Love and Empire. And Passionate Girl is last of all as they run around the first turn. Two Step Blues has inside position and a length and a half lead on Land Tiz, who races in second from Giants Causey, who settles in third for Gaff Leone. Mose Ginny is on a long rain while fourth. Love and Empire is fifth, and trailing the field is Passionate Girl. Single file style as they run to the backstretch through the opening quarter in 23 and 3. Two step blues by a length and a half. Up on the outside, Lantis is second. Giants Causey is third. Mose Ginny is fourth. Now moving up from the back is Passionate Girl. She's a joint last alongside Love and Empire, but Passionate Girl continues to progress for Jorge Ruiz through a 48 and two opening half mile. Two step blues and jockey Amisael Jaramillo to the far turn working on a length lead. Lantis second, Giants Causey ready to strike third. From fourth, here's Mose Ginny tacking on a bit. Now racing into second last is Love and Empire and Passionate Girl progressed and then drop back again as they race past the quarter mile pole. Up top, Two Step Blues has the lead through three quarters in 112 flat. Lantis to the attack, second over the top, Mose Ginny down at the inside, Giants Causey. Eighth of a mile to go. Here's Lantis and Panici trying to spring the upset and they take the lead now. Two Step Blues is second, Mose Ginny is third, then Giants Causey, but the upset is on at 11 to one. Here's Lantis to win it. Two Step Blues second, Mose Ginny third, Giants Causey fourth, then Love and Empire and passionate girl in 135 and three. Race four may have been a wide open betting race, but the longest shot in the race was the winner. Number six, Lan Tiz under jockey Luca Panici for trainer Michelle Nihe and Silencia Farm. Two, two step blues took him a long way to be second ahead of the one most Ginny who ran third. To the fifth race now, race five, five and a half furlongs over the turf. Scratch number one, Frisbee. These are claimers in for a price tag of 12,500. Six went to the gate. The favorite was number two, Keeker, as well as three, Bistro Moncor. And they're off. Both Blazing Diamond and Bistro Moncor off a step slow. 
from the inside. Keeker wins the starters, make big money, moving to challenge. Up on the outside, it's high time away in the top flight, and so is Some Roar. Blazing Diamond runs onto the heels of the top flight to race second last, and Bistro Moncor and Carlos Hernandez last of all as they speed to the far turn. Up front, make big money, leads three parts of a length. Some Roar comes to call second. Keeker very much in range, although she'll need a way through. Three wide is Blazing Diamond, followed by It's High Time and Bistro Moncor. The opening quarter went in 21 and one as they run to the top of the stretch. The six of them converge over two and a half lengths, four wide. Bistro Moncor making an attack for Carlos Hernandez. And here's Bistro Moncor from far back to try to take the lead. Keeker's trying to squeeze up the rail. Don't think there's any room there. Between horses, some more with Blazing Diamond. Final furlong, Bistro Moncor driving to a short lead. Make big money and Keeker up the inside. The, the, to the finish, Bistro Moncor with a swoop and a win. Bistro Moncor, three parts of a length. Keeker got second. Make big money third. Then it's high time in 56 flat. Favorites run 1-2 in today's fifth race to start the late pick five with number three, Bistro Moncor, swooping wide off the top of the turn and holding on for the score under Carlos Hernandez for owner-trainer Wesley Ward. Number two, Keeker second while trying to get through on the rail ahead of the five, Make Big Money, who ran third. Pick four, $97.45. The early pick five, $293.55. Time to take a timeout. The late pick four on the Wednesday card is up next right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. Back for race six on the main track at one mile. Claimers in for a price tag of $6,250. Scratch the four, Madrus, a field of six. Favorite was the three, Horneman. They're up. Magnanimous Mine wins the break from an outside draw. Moving up now, here's the favorite Horner Man up the challenge. Gun Carriage comes away in the top flight, and Getaway Car moves up. The two at the back are Buen Gusto, and the trailer is Fletcher is Golden. Out of the chute they run. Magnanimous Mine and jockey Roberto Alvarado Jr. Offensive-minded, and they exit the chute with a narrow lead. Getaway Car and Gaffleon will flank the leader second. Here's Fletcher is Golden and Gun Carriage. They're both moving up because they both want to save their position through an opening quarter in 24-3. and three. Juarez had to get out of there with Fletcher as Golden, so Baraka won that battle with Gun Carriage. Meanwhile, the leader is Magnanimous Mine by length over Getaway Car and Gun Carriage second and third. Horner Man and Edgar Zayas get started, albeit four wide. Fletcher as Golden now has to work between horses after getting the shuffle, and he in turn shuffles Blaine Gusto to the back of the pack through a 47 and three opening half mile. Around the far turn they go. Magnanimous Mine held together by Alvarado, a half a length in front. Three wide and on the attack. Here's Horner Man second. Working hard third is Getaway Car. Fletcher is golden fourth back to Gun Carriage. And trailing the field is Boyan Gusto with a quarter of a mile left to go. Up front, Magnanimous Mine still holds a narrow lead. Fully stretched now is Horner Man trying to get after him second after three quarters in 111 and two. They straighten for the drive. Magnanimous Mine has the lead. Horner Man continues to charge hard from second. Well back to Fletcher is golden third in deep stretch. Magnanimous Mine on the inside. Horner Man on the outside. And Horner Man is wearing down Magnanimous Mine. Horner Man will win it under Edgar Zayas by a neck. Magnanimous Mine second close for third. Fletcher is golden. Her getaway car in 136 and three. Well, it wasn't easy, but number six, Horner Man, was up to the task in the concluding stages, ridden hard by Edgar Zayas to prevail narrowly. Trainer Victor Barboza Jr. and owner Ernie Verdicia. Number seven, Magnanimous Mind ran a winning race, but had to settle for second ahead of the one Fletcher is Golden, who ran third. To the seventh race we go, one mile over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of 12,500. Key scratch here of number seven, Tonina, a field of six. The favorites were two, Ecliptical My Way, and six, Liberty Road. And they're off. Bobbling badly at the break was Ecliptical My Way. Out wide, Liberty Road commences the best, trying to recover his Ecliptomogo My Way with Beautiful Alley between horses. Then back at the outside, it's Motions first ahead of Brianna's Bucket and left behind last, Cape Magic. 
Out of the chute they run, and after blowing the start somewhat, the leader Ecliptical My Way duking it out with Liberty Road as they run to the opening quarter. Beautiful Alley is third, tapping on the brakes. Fourth is Motions first. Opening quarter, rock solid here, 23 and one. Three back to Brianna's bucket and still far back to Cape Magic. The two favorites now hook up. It's Ecliptical My Way pushed along by Liberty Road in the two path, and they continue to pour on the speed to the half mile mark, working three lengths better than Beautiful Alley, who's ridden third. Motions first is asked to quicken. Brianna's buckets had pace to chase through a demanding half mile of 45 and three. Still nothing from Cape Magic. Around the far turn they go. Liberty Road keeps the pressure on Ecliptical My Way at the three furlong point. And Figaro just took a look over his shoulder on Liberty Road. He must feel he has Ecliptical My Way put away. Working four ahead of Brianna's Bucket, who's tacking on third. Beautiful Alley is now fourth ahead of Motions first and Cape Magic. Quarter of a mile left to go. Three quarters, one ten and two. And Liberty Road indeed puts away Ecliptical My Way with Brianna's Bucket trying to rally in the center as they come to the final furlong. Up front, Liberty Road on a four-length lead. Way out in the crown of the course, Brianna's Bucket is trying to gain some ground with Ecliptical My Way, then a late run from Cape Magic ahead of Motions first. The winner, Liberty Road by four or five in the end. Second, Brianna's Bucket, third, Ecliptical My Way, fourth, Cape Magic ahead of Motions first, fifth, then Beautiful Alley in 137-2. and two. Smart ride here by jockey Nikki Figueroa. He knew number two, Ecliptical My Way, was the chief rival, so he dueled her into submission and held on for the score. Trainer Marty Wolfson and owner Miller Racing. For Brianna's Bucket tried to spoil the party. She rallied in the center of the course to get second, ahead of two, Ecliptical My Way, who ran third. It's break time. When we come back, the late daily double, turf racing. Up next, don't go away. Crossing the finish line for the last time can mean an uncertain future for many horses. Recognizing the need for a dignified retirement, the racing industry has made racehorse aftercare a top priority. In partnership with Gulfstream Park and the Florida Horsemen's Association, Florida Track provides retraining and adoption services for retired racehorses. Thanks to their efforts, the end of a racing career can signal the beginning of a new career. In show jumping, trail riding, police work, even therapy for children and veterans. However, good intentions do not come without cost. As a nonprofit organization, Florida Track relies on tax-deductible donations and volunteers to help pay for feed, training, housing, and veterinary care. To find out how you can help, contact Florida Track today. Your support will go a long way towards a new beginning. Back now for race number eight. Race eight was the Wednesday feature over the turf at seven and a half furlongs. A field of seven go postward. No changes here. This was a wide open betting race. They're off. Picture perfect beginning. Jockey Carlos Olivero is sending Summer Scamp hard to try to get to the early lead, but step two is also quick to challenge, and step two, and Jorge Ruiz will take the lead in the run to the first turn. Summer Scamp will have to back off and go around. Total joints a bit keen while three wide. Then back at the inside goes Mystic Sky ahead of Favorite Air. Turncoat is second last, and the early trailer is Modern Tail. They run around the first turn, and up front, the leader, step two. By a neck, up on the outside, Summer Scamp is second. Total joint, rain back to run third through an opening quarter, and a reasonable 24 and three. Then it's Mystic Sky who rides the rail in fourth, a neck in front of Modern Tail, who's three wide and getting going. Favorite air is between horses and now a bit keen as Modern Tail moved outside him. At the back of the pack is Turncoat, but not far away. No more than four and a half from front to back as they race to the half mile mark. Summer Scamp in the two path is now up to put ahead in front of step two second. Up on the outside, Modern Tail continues with this brush into the lead, and Modern Tail's going after Summer Scamp right now. Meanwhile, Favorite Air and Total Joint both look for racing room. 
Favorite air is three wide. Total joint is covered up. Mystic Sky worked off the fence for Panici and swings four wide for the drive. And Turncoat is the trailer as they turn in. Up the inside, Total Joint's cut the corner to try to get to the leader. And that leader is still Summer Scamp. Over the top, Mystic Sky. From between them, it's Favorite Air. There are still many chances with less than an eighth of a mile to go. Mystic Sky and Favorite Air go on. And Mystic Sky now takes charge. Mystic Sky and Panici going away. Favorite Air second, Total Joint third, then Summer Scamp and Turncoat in 128 and two. Jockey Luca Panici made a pivotal decision around the far turn as he moved Mystic Sky off the rail and into the clear, swung four wide off the corner and ran down the leaders. Panici on board for trader Phil Gleaves and owner Peter Vegso. To the ninth race now, five eights on turf, made in claimers in for a price tag of 12,500. Late scratch of number seven, Captain Corbin, also scratched the main track only, the nine, JB's Big Red. A field of seven went postward. The favorites were three, lost for words, four, Wathnon, and six, Ultimate Dude. And runners away. Archer one and Big Hole both off a step slow. And unseating the rider was Fitzwilliam Darcy. Number eight, Fitzwilliam Darcy unseated the jockey. Up front, the leader, lost for words, by almost a length now from the outside. That's the favorite and second ultimate dude. Loose horse is on the outside of Wathnon, who's now trying to improve. Panici's ahead of the loose horse, and then down inside goes Mexican Lucky ahead of Archer one and Big Hole. Around the far turn they go. Wathnon goes on the attack to take the lead. Lost for words is second. Mexican Lucky needs room from third. Up on the inside, that's Ultimate Dude still right with them. Archer one and Big Hole try to rally from the back as they swing in. Lost for words is back for more inside ahead of Wathnon second. Off cover and coming on well. Here's Ultimate Dude swung into the action by Louis Lionel Reyes with an eighth of a mile to go. Lost for words and Medina keep going. Up into second. Ultimate dude, that's as far as he'll get. Lost for words. Hang it on. Second ultimate dude, third, Wathnon, and fourth was Mexican Lucky, 56 and one. Morning line favorite, Lost for words, gets the job done, re-rallying on the inside under Abimael Medina, trainer Henry Colazzo, and owner and breeder Sarah Zimmerman. Six ultimate dude swung to the center and punched home for second ahead of the four, Wathnon. He was the first to move, but he had to settle for third. Late pick five, good for $184.55. And plenty of winners in today's Rainbow Six. 20 cent return, $1,182.06. Triggers the Thursday carryover of $113,335.44. And that wraps up today. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Thursday. Remember, our first post is still at 12.55 p.m. Hit the hay. I've been working all day, hit the hay, hit the hay, what do you say, hit the hay, hit the hay, hit the hay, well I'm tired, let me tell you Jack, I'm so tired.